What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Ark Survival Evolved. We got a Brontosaurus over there. We're not gonna mess with him. There's a supply drop on a cliff that's way over there. And um it's been a while. I I've been playing this quite a bit and so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna first start off by showing you my current level. Or Sass's current level, because this is her character after all. Uh, my previous episode recorded in all of black screen, so there's a lot you guys are going to be missing. Um, so there's a bug with the armor. I am level 27 now, and there is a bug with the armor. Every time you load back in, it disappears, and you just got to re-equip it like this. Just like in 7 Days to Die, you have to do this quite often in 7 Days to Die. And so that's what we look like now. Looks pretty cool. We're like a battle-hardened dino tamer, and you'll see what I mean when I said dino dino tamer. Oh man, we can make tranquilizer arrows now, so we can easily knock things out. And hoping, um, there's a lot of stuff we can make now. We can make a wooden walls and wooden stuff. Uh, yeah, we can even make a dino gate. Let's see, where is it? There's a wooden pillar. There's the dinosaur gate. This is the big walls. And um, that's what they kind of like needed. <laughs> and there's the gate to it. So yeah, we can make the giant dinosaur gate. But uh, I kind of got that a little bit too late. I didn't think that there was one. Because, I mean, I had initially thought it was like the wooden wall was going to be like the fence, but no, that's not the case. Uh, we have two little farm plots here. We put these all up on camera in the previous episode, but like I said, it recorded in black. So uh, as I went back to upload it, it went crazy. So basically how you do this, you drop the seed in there. You have it connected to a water source somewhere. And then you just drop in an animal dung. Or fertilizer, whichever you prefer. And, nope. uh, I guess it's gotta be fertilizer, okay. It should be over here. Sorry, having some severe issues right now, but um, there was, yeah, it's supposed to be something like right here. It's invisible. This is a compost bin, and basically you drop, yeah, dung and thatch in there, and it will slowly convert it to uh to to the um, fertilizer, which is good. Okay, so we got a ton of materials and tons of narco berries. But let's go ahead and show you guys the course of the deal here. Or the main course of the meal. <laughs> Alright, so I do apologize. I'm having some severe lag issues apparently. And uh, I'm sorry for that. That is on my end this time. Uh, so we added this extension onto the main house there. And you might be noticing there's like walls going out both sides. Yeah, there is a wall there, and you might see the green names over there that have uh, levels beside it. You want to guess what those are? I mean, you'll find out here in a moment, but yeah. Uh, yeah, so welcome to Sonari Beach, guys. It's a paradise. It's a paradise for sure. We do have running water. <laughs> It uh, feeds our um, water source over there, so we can actually drink from that pipe now too. We got the uh, mortar and pestle there, we got the cooking spit there, our bed over in that side, and two crates over here, both completely filled with stuff. And there's a big old growl. <laughs> Alright, I'll show you guys what me and Sass have been working on. So. We weren't aware that the, there was the wall thing, like, like I said, we thought we had to do it this way. And I admit, it still looks pretty neat, but uh, yeah, we weren't supposed to do it this way. 
So, next base we'll know. Um, so, you see these pets here. We have all of these and we have tamed these guys. Like in the previous episode, we had tamed this one. Or we was in the process of taming it and I said we was going to finish it in the next episode. It's already finished and um, actually I said in the next episode we would have this one already tamed. And so she's named Angel and she's leveled up like seven times already. It's been quite a while, like I said. Um, Sweet Pea is a trike. Uh, Sass tamed that one on her own. That was pretty cool. She liked that. Uh, Daria is a dodo. We just randomly got lucky of killing a dodo and it got knocked out. So we tamed it. And Sassy is a turtle. One of those, uh, yeah, turtle things. I, I don't even know their name. Uh, but yeah. There's one other, where is it? There it is. And uh, Vodu here is a... He is a... Silo. And he is a really, really neat pet. But uh, want to guess which one of these pets are our strongest fighters? If you were saying Angel, you're probably right. But if you're saying anything else, you're wrong. That. So she's got 847 health, she does 233% damage, and she's got 260 stamina, and uh, a pretty good sized torpor. You know, you can carry the small animal gun. Carry the poop, I said. And so guys, as you log out, carry the poop and then it poops. <laughs> But yeah, so um, if you guys log out on a single player server, time does not pass. So that's why they have so many berries still on them, because I tamed them with that many berries. And uh, yeah, they just got so many. So that was her stats. She has a saddle on her. Let me go ahead and check that out too. Just like your personal armor, you have to double click it and then double click it again to. Oh, never mind. You have to click and drag it again to uh, re equip it on her for it to show up and just like that. It's a glitch. I'm sure they're working on it. And uh, so, this is how you mount a pet you just click E with a saddle on it, and voila, you're on a mount. And they only go forward. Uh, I can't move her because she's too heavy with my weight added, so she won't move. But um, if you're not heavy enough, they will move and they will enjoy it. It's pretty cool, right? And so you can just run around with a dinosaur like that. And Sweet Pea is a trike. You would think this thing has some really, really powerful attacks. But it's actually my weakest creature with a damage. Only deals 175% and only has 625 health and 150 stamina. She runs out of stamina very quickly. But uh, yeah, there's one really cool thing about having so many pets is you can have each and every one of these guys follow you. The dodo is of course absolutely useless. It uh, has. It started with only 40 health, so yeah, they're very easily knocked out and easily killed. Um, but I increased its health four times. Uh, it actually has a pretty decent melee damage, but it's so weak to begin with that amount is really nothing. So the dodo is not really a pet that you want to fight with, but it does lay eggs. And uh, if you get the egg, it actually helps boost your um, nutrition, your food and health, up quite a bit. So they're really good animals for gathering the eggs. And uh, so the Vodu is a Dilo. And he has 410 health and he has 219% attack damage. But he attacks so fast, that makes him a very powerful ally to have. He is very quick on his feet, and he's quick about moving around the target so they can't hit him. Um, so the tank of the group is, oddly enough, this turtle. This guy, or girl, is, um, she's got 1,078 health. 
That's insane. And 229% uh, melee damage. We actually boosted our health from 800 to 1000. We did it only twice and then we put the rest of the points in melee damage to boost it from 150% to 229. Um, so she is our tank basically and she will tank it just fine. I mean she can take the hits. Like I was looking at stats for Brontosaurus is at that same level. She's only level 7. Brontosaurus at that level only has like a, like maybe 800 health. So yeah, comparing to something as big as a Brontosaurus, that turtle has a lot of health. And uh, so this is our little paradise here. Like I said, it was a paradise. Uh, we have our walls walling in and making a makeshaft fence. We're not going to make it too high like we did with the building, but um, we are going to make it all the way around in wood. Uh, we did mix, or we, we kind of stopped before we finished upgrading it all to wood, but uh, we got like seven or eight sections there that are still thatched. But that's okay, we'll change it to wood eventually. So this is the room we added on. There's nothing in here right now. It's got a torch in the middle of the floor, though. This is probably going to be the crafting room, to be honest. Like, with the smithy and stuff, I'm sure they can make those. I'm pretty sure I've got the recipes for it soon enough. Let me see here. A few engrams. Yeah, so there's a flare gun. We did craft the spyglass, and we got all the pipe system, almost all of the wood stuff. We got our bow and arrows. We even got a parachute. And um, yeah, a hatch frame. There's the fence foundation. That's what we needed to begin with. I totally didn't realize that. That's why our fence looks like a house. <laughs> And there's the refining forge. And so, uh, my next recipes are at level 30. I don't know what that is. I think it might be plate armor or something. It kind of looks like plate armor. But uh, there's the smithy. And there's the forge. And there's a watering well that you can use to uh, give water to yourself. We can also craft a compass at the smithy. So uh, that's pretty cool. And there's a, uh, this is what the turtle is. It's a Carbonemus. I, I can never pronounce that, so I just call it a turtle. And then uh, the scorpion saddle. So we could get the saddles, but I'm not too concerned with that because, like I said, they're too heavy to ride right now. And uh, so, yeah. And there's the trike saddle. I didn't even realize that one was there. But. So yeah, guys, um, that's how you craft your saddles. You just get the recipe for it and get a ton and ton of hide to uh, craft it. We do need large storage bin eventually. Not too concerned with the pipes right now because we don't really have a lot of piping. And that little area is pretty much our farm. So... <laughs> And I do want the wooden catwalks because then we can put a catwalk along our wall and uh, be able to walk on it, which would be nice. So yeah, that's our base so far. Um, we have a lot of things already gathered up, but no wood. We're out of wood and we are having issues again, guys. I do apologize for that. I'm going to show you upstairs of here. It's a work in progress for sure. Uh, so this is what the wooden ladder looks like. I thought it was actually going to be like a slanted ladder, but no, it's like rust ladders. So you can actually use that to climb into people's bases. Uh, so yeah, good good tip for anyone trying to raid on a PvP server. Just go and uh, make some ladders. The roofs are a lot more fragile than the uh, ground floor and the walls. Right, so we're on it. And then we just go up, and there we go. And uh, so yeah, that thing's just standing over there, chilling out. Our wall, we're going to make like a one high room up here, just because I don't want it too high. 
And these ones actually in the front here don't belong. It's supposed to be a roof. So I'll show you how to demolish a wall. You basically just hover over that until it times down. Then click. So it's just as simple as that. You don't have to bash your own walls down, which is great. I think that's a great feature to have. It makes uh, expanding your base quite easy. And so hitting these uh, thatch walls with an axe does 20 damage. So 20 damage off of their 1600 health or whatever it is. I think it's 1600. Uh, 24 for the floor. Yeah, 1600 for the wall. And I believe 1500 for the ceiling. But uh, so yeah, it does 20 damage on that. And look at the wooden wall. It's got 10,000 health. See? And we actually got a couple of them supply drops too. Like um, the previous episode actually started with a supply drop landing on our head because I ran to it. But the uh, the foundations actually have more health, or yeah, more health than basically than the uh, walls, which I like because um, in Rust. The foundations are weaker and it makes no sense at all because people just break through the foundations left and right rather than walls. But yeah, the foundation has 15,000 health. I'm just going to call it health. It's probably durability, but yeah. So it's becoming nighttime again. I'm going to stop the recording here. Um, basically, I just wanted to show you guys that Sass has a load of pets already. She has five total so far. Uh, we do plan on tranquilizing some more oh. targets and uh, maybe get that, uh, there's saber tooth tigers in this uh, forest near us. I've died like four times to those tigers. They are fierce. I mean, if I can tranquilize them and get one of them as a pet, that is the perfect battle pet. Dead serious. It is perfect. I watched one take out a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Yeah, <laughs> and there's Carnos in that woods too, so that's why I built the wall rather quick. Because they keep roaming, they keep roaming down here, and um, yeah. Also, those uh, giant eagle things. Uh, I think they're Argentis or something like that. Those guys, uh, Argentaris maybe. I think that's what it's called. But um, those guys actually swoop down here after my pets, and they tried to attack them. All of these pets ganged up on it and killed it. <laughs> and then I had a, another one swoop down on me while I was, while uh, Sass was taming that trike there. I started it, guys. I knocked it out, and then um, she started taming it. But as I knocked it out, I had a uh, another one of those Argentaris guys swoop down at me. And uh, I had to kill it. I killed it with a spear. It didn't take too many hits, but they are fierce too. They are very strong, guys. And proof of my ventures, I've got Tyrannosaurus Rex arms and Argentavis. That's what it's called. Argentavis tav Talons. Um, my, yeah, the Dilo ate the other two. <laughs> but there was four. Uh, so yeah, that's basically our adventure so far. Um, yeah. Not really having to show you guys anything today, but uh, I will uh, kind of explain this little irrigation system out here. To grow a farm, you need water, you need fertilizer, and you need seeds. Your farm plots basically look like that. Let me get the torch out here. They look like that, and uh, when you walk up to them, it'll tell you if it's watered, it'll tell you if it's fertilized, and it'll tell you if it's seeded. Uh, both of these are seeded. I don't have fertilizer yet. That one is apparently not seeded, which is weird. Uh, I guess they decay. Because I, I planted one of these here. Maybe it just delayed it or something. I don't know. Let's, let's take a dump and fertilize this here. If we can.
Yeah, there we go. See, now it says fertilizer 1000. And it's a seedling. And you basically have to replace the fertilizer quite a bit. So, uh, yeah. Just be aware that watching your um, farm crops is important. And this pipe system here. Uh, you have to start by laying out a single pipe, straight pipe, near where you want to start it. And then take it all the way down. Otherwise, if you start at the water and try to go up, the beach is going to be in the way and you won't be able to place it. So if you do it this way and do it in reverse, you can place it and it'll be just fine. And so that's our water intake pipe. It's kind of a little lopsided on the connection, but I don't know why that is. But it's that way and it, it, it still works. And the sound quality is terrible when recording. And so it just basically takes the water up here. I can even drink from this. And we can attach that well that you've seen to this as well. And it'll kind of store the water for us so we can easily just go and get a bunch of water. And we can access its inventory and kind of drop a water skin in there. And it'll fill up. And then we can just take it back out. There we go. You could literally store four water skins in there to gather water if you want. And then you'll have four to go and adventure off somewhere with if you really feel it necessary. Alright guys, so I'm going to call the episode there. Thanks for watching. And hopefully you guys enjoyed despite the lagginess. I'm sure it's really bad. I do apologize guys. I will try my best to figure out something to fix that. Um, until then, I will see you guys next time. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. Hopefully this explained some things and kind of showed you how the pets work. Uh, you can actually command them pets to attack with you. You can command them to be aggressive and just attack everything. Which uh, probably would be a good idea if you have a lot of pets together. Just put them all on aggressive and then anything comes near you, they'll kill it and kind of they'll butcher it for you even. Uh, like the little carnivores, they'll butcher it for you and they'll hold all the materials on them. So that's good. But I think because they're too weighed down anyway, they can't move. So, yeah. That's basically that. Uh, you can also command them to follow you. You can have all of them follow you. So as many pets as you want, you can have follow you and act as your bodyguards. If you have them set to attack your target, if you have them set to that, they will attack anything that attacks you and anything you attack as well. So it helps a lot to have a really strong bodyguards like that. And the turtle guys, the turtles are really good about it. They are really, really good for being tanks for you. And uh, the, the uh, parasaurs are actually pretty decent too. They start with low HP, but as they level up, they get like 100 HP per level. So if you want to add HP to it, that's an easy way to get it really, really high health. And once they have high health, guys, they pretty much are unstoppable. Uh, we haven't tried fighting a Carno or anything yet, so yeah. And we can get the blue and green airdrops now, so that's good. I'm thinking uh, we might adventure inland sometime soon and kind of see what's going on in there. Uh, the closest I've been, I'll show you the map. Sorry guys, I, I said I was going to end it, but I haven't ended it yet. Uh, that's the map so far, I have ventured inward a little bit. Alright guys, so now I am ending it, so thanks for watching, thanks for sticking around, and I'll see you guys next time. Um, till then, have an awesome day guys, have an awesome day, see you around.